Hey everyone, Reflected here. And today, we're gonna play through one of the missions of my upcoming Spitfire campaign, Beware, Beware. So last week I just released an announcement video, kind of a teaser, and the reception was very good. I got some very kind and encouraging comments, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Uh, it feels really good that when I'm putting in all this work, uh, it's appreciated and people actually look forward to playing uh, this campaign. Anyhow, I picked a mission uh, from the middle, sortie, yeah, it's the RAF, so it's not mission, it's a sortie, sortie 9, um, out of 14, there's going to be 14 combat missions, but 20 missions in total, I'm not going to give you any spoilers, you will see why. So, uh, it all happened on the 13th of January, 1943. Let's have a look at this. 13th of January, 611 Squadron, RAF, Biggin Hill, England. Our Spitty is parked right here. Wind is coming from there, so we're going to use this runway over here. It's going to be a Circus, Circus 249 to Abbeville. Engine start at 12.47, leader takeoff at 12.50, and setting course at 12.57. Weather is pretty good, ceiling and visibility unlimited. Quite a bit of wind though, Q and H, this is for the altimeter. Uh, the radio buttons, A, it's zone of control, channel A, that means uh, the control agency that's going to uh, direct us when we're over England. B is not in use. By the way, historically, channel B was Zona, but I had to switch it to A because uh, channel B is used for the BBC. If you've played my other campaigns, you know that I like to entertain people uh, and the players en route to the target. So it's not going to be different. You can listen to the BBC Home Service on Channel B. If I use Channel A for that, then when you start the mission, the music would be on by default, and that would feel a bit strange, so I swapped these two. Channel C, grass seed control. So that's the controlling agency um, based in Appledore, uh, who direct all the fighters over enemy territory. And Channel D is air sea rescue. I'll tell you more about that. And this is a really cool Irvin jacket. I love Irvin jackets. Order of battle. So it's the whole Biggin Hill wing that's going to be airborne today, led by uh, 340 Ile de France squadron, the Free French squadron. And the whole show is led by wing commander Dicky Milne. And then we'll follow them as 611 Squadron, call site Gimlet, led by squadron leader Hugo Armstrong. And we're going to be in red section as red 3, so just on squadron leader Armstrong's right hand side. This is the plan we take off from Biggin Hill, then go to. Can I zoom in? Always mix it. Up. Yeah, this is Beachy Head and this is Dungeness. I always mix the two. So, fly to Beachy Head and then all the way to Abbeville. And the idea is that uh, friendly bombers would uh, would bomb Abbeville, where uh, one of the best German Jagdgeschwader is based. Oh, by the way, the the purple, purple, pink. I'm slightly color deficient. Anyhow, uh, these areas uh, mark flak, heavy flak, but in between you can uh, encounter some light flak, so better not fly too low. And this is going to be very useful uh, for finding your way home. So you have to identify where you are, and then it will give you an approximate course to base and distance because. Uh, I will show you that I disabled everything on the F10 map. 
So surprise, surprise, 1943, you don't have a GPS that pinpoints your location. That's cheating. And I know I was like, okay, let's leave it up to the player whether they want to use it. But then I thought about myself, I always get lazy. And when the option, when the option is there and it's available, I just hit the F10 uh, map and take a peek. That's where I am. Okay. But no, let's not get lazy. Let's fly it like real World War II RAF pilots. Surely you can tell whether it's, I don't know, you're near Abbeville or Grenay, whatever, any big towns that you can identify, Lille, and then you can easily find that on this map and you have a, a vector home. Okay, the briefing. Uh, I will not read this because it will be read out to you by squadron leader, uh, sorry, Wing Commander Milne. But these are, there's some good advice that I recommend reading before you fly the missions. So start your engine and warm it up as per the pilot's notes. This, uh, the campaign will come with uh, Spitfire 9 pilot's notes and managing your engine properly is essential. You won't be able to complete the missions without that. Um, check your briefing and kneeboard images, follow the timings and courses precisely. That goes without saying it's a historical campaign. It's not a cowboy campaign. You can't just go and do what you like. When ready, press spacebar to give your section leader the thumbs up. Taxi only after him. Yeah, I made this in order to, to make the flight lead to wait for the player because some of us may take longer to start the engine and so on and so forth. So as soon as you give them the thumbs up, then they start taxiing. Rejoin with the formation over the field and wait for the brief time to set, to set course. This is how it goes. Complete, complete radio silence, so uh, the Spitfires take off. Circle over the field, rejoin, and at the brief time, they just set course over uh, waypoint one. AI climb behavior is hard-coded. With a little practice, it's easy to keep up with them. Trim your aircraft properly, apply sufficient power, and don't let your speed drop below optimum climb speed. This is super important. And as soon as the campaign's released, I foresee tons of threads uh, uh, being opened about this by users who are not used to this, saying, oh, it's impossible to, to, climb, to keep up with the AI. I can't tell the AI how steep they should climb, how fast, what power settings. It's hard coded in the DCS AI, but actually it's quite possible to keep up with them as long as you do everything properly. I will, I will talk about this during the mission. It's so a number three, you can initiate attacks while number, number four covers you in case your section is engaged. So you start the campaign as a number four and your main priority uh, will be to cover your lead, your number three, because you're a wingman. But now you're a number three and you have a wingman. So as soon as there's an engagement, you can take the initiative, but you can just wander off and do whatever you like. Mm, you can give orders to your wingman using the built-in radio menu. Note that you will not hear a reply as he's set to silent. This is because if, if he wasn't set to silent, Every time uh, the DCS AI spots an enemy, he calls it out. And if uh, there are 30 bandits coming head on, it will call them out 30 times. And that's super annoying. So I just set them to silent. You can still give them orders, but they won't reply. It's not because it doesn't work. It's because they're set to silent. Don't try to be a hero. It's harder to complete the campaign without ever dying or getting captured than to score kills, but having to refly some of the missions. This is really important. If, if you want a cowboy campaign, if you want to shoot stuff and be a fighter ace, historical campaigns like this are the worst idea. Don't fly it. But if you want to reenact and, and really understand what it was like to uh, fly with the RAF as a fighter pilot, then this is for you. Fly it as if, as if you were there for real and focus on survival rather than glory. Yeah, this, this is the key for immersion. If you convince yourself that this is not just a game, you're there for real, and you convince yourself that you want to survive it, then 
these missions, this campaign will become really, really immersive. The mission is successfully completed if you take off, then finish over friendly territory. Landed anywhere, crash landed on a parachute, but alive. Also, this is, this is how it was in real life. So just imagine if this was real life, what outcomes would enable you to, to fight another day, to fly the next mission? That's how the campaign works. You just have to take off. You can't finish the mission on the ground. You take off and then if you get over here and then you, I don't know, you mess up your engine and you crash land, mission success. If you make it to the target, get hit, make it back to the coast, land at, I don't know, Hawkinge, mission success. Or bail out just off the coast, mission success. Or there's another function, in case you can make it back, contact Air Sea Rescue on channel D. If you're close enough, you'll get a reply and the mission will count as successfully completed. So I can't tell you where that line is, but if you get close enough to England, but you still can't make it back to the coast, uh, and you switch to channel D, super important, you call ARC Rescue using the F10 radio menu, and if you get a reply, then you're good, then the mission is successful. You can just quit right there or bail out or do whatever you want, as long as you don't die. As soon as you die, it's over. Okay, I hope that was clear enough. And now let's have a look at the mission. Gentlemen, I give you Circus 249. It's a repeat performance of the sortie we flew four days ago. Let's just hope the bombers won't be recalled this time, eh? I shall lead 340. 611 will follow behind led by squadron leader Armstrong. Today we'll play the role of the bouncers rather than close escort. We'll fly ahead at low level and try to catch the Jerrys while they're taking off and assembling. We'll try and keep them busy so the Bostons can reach their target unmolested. Any questions? Alright, dismissed. Okay, that was the briefing. A bit of a spoiler there. The mission before this was pretty much the same. Then we were close escort, but uh, the bombers were recalled. Well, you'll see. In the campaign so let's start it up um, I'm gonna release a uh, Spitfire tutorial to make sure you know how to start start her up take off land manage the engine climb so I'm just gonna go through it quickly and set the brakes and check the controls oh, good free filter on battery on Trim all the way tail heavy to keep uh, the tail on the ground. Q and H was one zero zero zero. And that's about right. Uh, fuel on. Let's pressurize the fuel lines. Okay. Prime the engine. T Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a cold day. Covers off and throttle cracked. Contact. Make sure to run. And it's running. Okay, engine's running, so, yeah, what I told you about. Are we ready? We press the space bar to give uh, the section leader the thumbs up. It's an FYF over there. That's squadron leader Armstrong. Okay, uh, fuel pump on. Uh, what else? So we need to warm up, have at least... 15 to 20 degrees of oil temperature and 60 degrees of radiator temperature but oil pressure is really high so we want to use oil dilution which is somewhere down uh, friggin head tracking down here and I'm using a shortcut I'm keeping it depressed and the oil pressure is dropping maximum is 120 so we're gonna try to bring it 
below 120 and then apply more power more dilution okay there's a there's a flare 340 is taking off already the French guys I want to achieve at least uh, 1500 RPM sorry my head tracking is not the most stable one I'm getting seasick too <laughs> okay now the engine is warming up we're gonna test if the slipper tank is working so slipper tank on main tank off and if the engine doesn't quit for a minute then we're good radio on Uh, what else? Let's test the gun sight. Not good. Let's set it up. The range 200 yards. Base 30, 33 feet. So when the enemy aircraft's wingspan uh, just fits this gap, then uh, he's at convergence range. Now we gotta set the compass to directional gyro because I didn't know either but this by default is not accurate you know uh, true north and magnetic north is different and magnetic variation here at this time was like 10 to 11 degrees so now it's uh, 3 to 9 or okay Good. Try and apply more power. And if we can open up to zero boost, we're going to exercise the prop. Oh, zero boost. Prop pitch up and down. Okay, working. Back up. That's the magnetos. One. Back on. Two. Back on. All good. Test the supercharger. All good. We've got the temperatures as well. Oh, and we have to check the radiator. Keep the button depressed, the radiator test button, and the ground crew will confirm that it opens. Now I'm releasing the button, and it closes. All good, it works. Okay, thumbs up. What time is it? Already 34. We've got three minutes to take off. It's not a lot. Keeping an eye on my leader. Thank you. Oh, by the way, I have um, dot only icons on because I'm playing on a laptop and it's super hard to spot uh, anything basically without uh, without icons. But I don't like full on icons; they they just break the immersion. So I'm using dot only. It's good workaround, good compromise. Oh, oh. Traffic jam. Got in here. Normally, you shouldn't taxi so fast, but the AI taxi is really fast and they're just, uh, they drive on my ass. Their foot's on the gas. I don't like that. Okay, let's trim the aircraft. Rudder fully starboard. That's rock and roll. Plus two boost. Keep it straight. Stick back. Okay, 
Stick forward, open it to 9 boost. Stick forward, keep it straight. Keep the windshield on the horizon. And we're airborne. Gear up, open up to 12 boost to clean the spark plugs. Trim, trim, trim. Okay, we're good. Throttle back to plus seven. 26.50 RPM. Trim, trim, trim. Okay, filter off. Make sure fuel pump is on. Gun side on. IFF on. Let's switch to uh, the drop tank. Did I just. Oh! Silly me. I took off using the drop tank. I didn't switch back. That was not a smart move. But we survived. Fortunately. Okay. There are the others. Time is... When is set course time? Uh, oh, 57. Soon. We've got one minute to spare. That's why I said you have to follow the brief times, otherwise uh, they just fly away without you like in real life. Yeah, they are setting course. They're turning toward uh, beachy head. Aren't they? Some are still taking off, but they'll catch up with us en route. And now I have to figure out where I am. So, we're not the lead squadron. That's the lead squadron, we're to the right and above them. That looks like it. Oh, and I almost forgot, turning on the pito heating. It's a cold day and you're gonna lose your airspeed indicator and some of your gauges if you fail to do that. So this is how it happened in real life. Uh, fighters did not climb to their assigned altitude. Uh, they set out at low level in order to remain uh, undetected by enemy radars. They only started to climb just before the enemy coastline. Several squadron records, uh, combat reports, and memoirs uh, confirm this. Okay, let's get closer and check if that's really squadron leader Armstrong in FYF. F Freddy. Throughout the campaign you're really gonna get to know him. He was a great guy his nickname was uh, Sinker and it's not because uh, he could drink full pitchers of beer without even swallowing just pour them down uh, his throat it's because uh, early in his career once he strafed an enemy boat and managed to sink it throttle down yeah FYF that's Sinker there. So over there, that's 340 led by Wing Commander Milne. Trim, trim, trim properly. And 
Let's switch to channel B, the Baker. Beautiful sunshine, sparkling white snow everywhere. We're flying a Spitfire. I would really love to try this campaign in VR, but I don't have VR. I find it really fun to uh, fly formation. So when you're not the lead, but you have to fly formation on an AI. However, the AI flies erratically. I can't do anything about that. Uh, sorry. Let's turn this off. I can't do anything about that uh, from within the mission editor. So there's that, especially when they turn, and especially when it's an AI that is not the lead, but an AI that's following another AI. They warp, they lag. It's worse than playing multiplayer uh, using a dial in modem. But you can get used to it, and if you anticipate that, it's easy. The idea is um, to identify who is the lead AI and try to follow him and know that the rest of the AI, for AI formation will just fall in place once the turn is done. Mm, ED promised that there would be a new AI flight model, general flight model or global flight model, something like an abbreviation, I, I don't recall. But when that comes, I hope all these issues will be solved. Because again, in the mission editor, I can tell the AI to fly to waypoint one, to climb to waypoint two, switch to waypoint three, or even four. But how they perform it, I have no say in that. And the other problem with the Spitfire is the overcooling. I mean, I'm running it. Whoa running at cruise settings and already hold pressure is above 120. That shouldn't happen. Also, radiator temperature is down to 45, so below minimum. That should never happen. And from time to time, uh, I even get engine failures because of, uh, because of this, because of overcooling. But ED promised uh, that they would revise the cooling model of all warbirds. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. They promised it a long time ago, although I imagine it's not a very easy job. Yeah, fingers crossed. Until then, if you want, sometimes you can just keep all dilution depressed for a while or Increase RPM, go into slide slip, and apply power to warm it up a little. But yeah, after a minute, it's gonna be running cold again. Oh, sorry, that's blue flight over there. You yeah, better not fool around. I'm gonna get chewed out. Here's my, here's my wingman. FYP. Cool. I'm, I'm also going to show you a nice little trick. Uh, I know a lot of you complain about these missions being too long. Oh, that's too bad. These missions were like this in real life. But if you don't have the time, just Press the magic button, time acceleration. Twice, three times, and it's still quite easy to control uh, at any higher acceleration. It's getting super hard, but like this, it's not such a big deal. And yeah, you can save a lot of time. Or you can just fly it at normal speed and savor every moment. I find that the more you prepare for an engagement in flight simulators, the more 
effort you put in there. So start up the engine properly, warm it up, take off, fly out. You've already invested, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes of your life into it. And that helps you be afraid of being shut down, which makes it all the more uh, realistic and immersive. But maybe that's just me. Okay, we're approaching Beachy Head. Complete radio silence. Really important. Temperatures are way low. Not happy about that. Pressing the, the oil dilution. Bombers. Hello, please observe radio silence. Stop the French chit chat. So, in the last mission, we were close escort, escort. Uh, but now we're just flying out at low altitude. Oh, this is what I said. It's like a 20 degree change of direction, but the AI keeps zigzagging and messing it up, warping and lagging. But eventually, it's going to be fine. Oh. And there we go. boat over there in the distance, the ship, and we say goodbye to old Blighty. Throttling back a bit. So the idea is uh, to fly so low in order to remain under the radar because, uh, surprise, the Earth is not flat, so uh, the radar signals, they cannot follow the curvature of the Earth. And if you're low enough, then, yeah, they cannot see you. There's a fun little experiment that I like to do. There's a, uh, a lake, a huge lake in my home country. Um, and like after sunset, the water is super still, perfectly still. And you can see the lights uh, at the other side of the lake. It's like, I don't know, f four or five miles uh, from, from the other coast. And then you submerge into the water and only your eyes are out and those five miles are already enough uh, to mask the lights that are uh, by the side of the road that runs along the other coast same with radar here the fuel gauge in the Spitfire is not very informative so we have to press that button and then we'll know how much fuel we have in the bottom tank but the top tank no idea once that's empty the needle is going to start moving and how much fuel we have in our drop tank slipper tank zero idea as soon as our engine cuts out then we'll know it's empty it's also quite realistic you can you can keep an eye on uh, on, on, on the clock or your watch and kind of anticipate it but I remember reading uh, oh, it's good, this is yellow three. My oil pressure is dropping fast I'm taking it home yellow three Roger take yellow four back with you and try and get some altitude which one's yellow flight Roger see you chaps Oh, there they are. 
Jesus. I'm gonna collide with my CO. Okay. Turning for home. Oh, where was I? Some more oil dilution. Is it dilution or dilution? I never know. So in this campaign, you're going to meet lots of historical characters like uh, over there, Hugo Armstrong or Dickie Milne. Or I think El Deer is flying as Yellow 3. Uh, yeah, Yellow 3. Oh, wait, Yellow Leader. Or maybe that's a different mission. I don't know by heart. But you're going to meet lots of uh, historical characters. I'm quite far from the coastline and quite far from France as well. In the middle of the channel at low altitude. So now you'll understand why proper startup procedure and uh, engine management is important. And the thing is, usually people fly from a hot start or maybe cold start but a short mission or start in the air and just do some fighting and they don't even realize that they have big gaps in their knowledge about flying the Spitfire. And the first time they fly a historical mission like this, then, uh, yeah, something will go wrong. So it's really important that you study uh, the pilot's notes, and as I said, I will release a uh, complete Spitfire tutorial later on to help you guys. So, uh, soon enough, we'll start climbing. You can anticipate that. The way the AI climbs is that chop the throttle to absolute zero like they hit the brakes they pull up sharply and then as soon as their airspeed drops below 160 they apply full power and climb if you anticipate these moves it's easy to follow them classic mistakes why why people cannot follow the AI in a climb is a they don't apply enough power the AI climbs at approximately 12 to 14 boost and uh, if you check them out in F2 view then it says 99% RPM so that's like 2900 RPM don't be afraid to uh, apply enough power mistake number two they're not trimming their air aircraft properly so that needle over there has to be centered otherwise you're uh, skidding side slipping generating way more drag than your AI friends oh there they are chop the throttle go up rpm to 99 ish percent open the throttle and trim 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 It's a bit late with everything, so I'm gonna apply even more power. Almost at full power. And the other mistake is that when they see the AI up there, they pull the nose up too high and they drop below optimum climb speed, which is around 170. 180 in the speed, but never go below 160. I'm just trying to convert this extra speed to altitude and throttle back down to plus 14 RPM back to let's say 99 <laughs> percent, whatever that means. And see, I'm actually climbing 
faster than the AI now. I'm pulling the nose up to slow down a bit. Uh oh. Yeah. I'm almost colliding with uh, blue flight. Sorry, guys. I'm going to sort it out soon. Air speed is 160, good enough. And see that needle over there, that has to be centered. And voila, I'm climbing with the AI. It may be a little difficult in the first mission that, but after one or two, you're gonna get used to it. It's gonna be second nature. A bit more trim to keep the needle centered. A bit more power because I'm lagging behind. Oh, by the way, I just received the trailer, uh, the final version of the trailer from Dominic Keller, and it's absolutely epic. I can't wait to show you guys. I just don't understand how he keeps making better and better videos. That guy is super talented. Okay, but I will only share it when the campaign is released and before you ask me, I have no idea. I've already submitted everything. Oh, supercharger kicked in. Throttle back a bit. I've already submitted everything to ED. So now they're, I don't know, testing or doing their magic. It's entirely up to them when it will be released. I'm hoping within a few months. But can't make promises because I have no idea. By the way, I'm using face track and as I speak, it kind of confuses the, the face track thing and uh, my virtual head is jumping a little bit. Okay, we're leveling off. Zona calling turban. Zona calling turban. Throw back. Contact grass feed on channel C. Over. Okay, we're entering enemy airspace. This is Turbin answering, Roger. Channel C, Charlie, over. Channel C, there. Hello, Grass C, Turbin leader calling. We'll check in as briefed. What's the form? Hello, Turbin, we have nothing for you at the moment. Proceed with the mission. Okay, that's it. By the way, I spent a lot of time coming up with the radio effects because I found a, a video on YouTube. It, it, was, a, it was a recording of uh, an RAF bomber mission uh, of a Lancaster crew and I tried to replicate that effect. Same kind of distortion and same kind of, you know, effects that I heard and I'm pretty happy with the result and on top of that you have background noise so where when you hear a fellow pilot speak okay throttling back RPM down uh, a fellow pilot speak you hear the engine noise in the background when you hear Apple door so grass seat control you hear other people in the control room in the background little details like this uh, add to the immersion I'm obsessed with uh, little details like that. So now I'm flying at plus two or zero boost and 2400 RPM, that's cruise settings, but I really have to watch the temperatures to make sure I don't overcool the engine. Finger, fingers crossed that's gonna be fixed very soon. We shall see.
because you know when when you fly at cruise settings or even minus two boost and 2100 rpm you overcool the engine but that shouldn't happen uh, it should remain warm enough uh, to work but on the other hand when you do a vertical maneuver and you do a power on stall very often that one single stall just overheats the engine because there's no airflow through the radiators but I think that's that that must not be realistic because I've never seen it mentioned anywhere in any pilot's notes or any memoirs personal accounts like don't power on stall the plane because you kill the engine I think that's just nonsense I may be wrong but it doesn't appear realistic to me so in one situation it the engine is not cooled enough and in another situation the engine is overcooled for example in the Mustang same engine almost uh, on the ground um, brake cap that's not for us it's the Canadians Roger, steering zero, six, zero. maybe Johnny Johnson so on the ground they tested the engine at full power with the tail being held down for I don't know one minute or three like I don't recall the exact numbers but if you do that in DCS you kill the engine because you have no airflow but like something is missing from the modeling that makes it act weird oil dilution my slipper tank is just about empty I think oh, we're turning that's the estuary of the Sun oh sh slipper tank empty in real life when it was empty um, they dropped their tanks immediately because that was just extra drag however in game the AI only drops their tanks when they engage the enemy so there's that More power to catch up. Three four zero is quite. Seven aircraft, combat formation. Keep looking for the bastards. Roger. Spread out a little. There's blue flight. Still no flak. I expect some flag because uh, there's Abbeville airfield and the city Abbeville. Uh, yeah, I expect a lot of flag there, especially at low level. So if we do get engaged, it's very important to avoid overflying the airfield at low altitudes. Oh, Captain Sinker here. Once we're in, remember, go in quickly, punch hard, and get out. Uh, that was the squadron leader. And that was one of the rules of Sailor Milan. By the way, the 10 rules of air fighting by Sailor Milan will be included with the campaign. I really strongly recommend you read them, think about them before flying these missions. They're key to survival. Okay, we caught up with the CO. Still no flak. So in this campaign, also, like in my other campaigns, uh, you're going to have realistic amounts of flak and flak locations. While heavy flak is usually concentrated in some of the areas, but light flak can be really deadly if you fly below, let's say, five, six thousand feet. So do not fly below that. Or if you have to, fly at treetop level and always change direction. Oh, there's... Uh-oh. This is blue leader. Snappers below. Snappers below. 
Okay. Propeller push. Maxing. Dropping tanks. Going down. Safety catches off. Where the hell are they? Can't see anything, so I'm just gonna follow my lead. There's two of them right in front of us. Where? Oh, they're going down over there. There they are. Tally ho. Wingman. Cover me. I'm dead. So that's it. I died. That's how easy it is to die. And I was stupid. I was just I just wanted to impress you guys with a great deflection shot, and a great bounce, and bam, I became a flaming ball of debris and pieces of human flesh. Uh, falling down on Abbeville airfield. And I have a reef. And I have a refly button. We have a refly button. Imagine how hard it was in real life to survive 50 or 100 missions. This was just one single mission. The campaign only has 14. You only have to survive 14. And even if you don't, it's not a big deal, you have a refly button. But imagine sitting up here in the cold in a cramped cockpit, having your throat super dry because of the oxygen, and you're exhausted by constantly facing death and seeing your, your best friends die, go down in flames. And you keep going for months, maybe years, for hundreds of missions. Times like this, if you think about it, these young men have my utmost respect. We can't possibly imagine what they were going through. So that's what I meant uh, during the briefing. When you fly this campaign, think about it that way and try to survive. probably the hardest task ever. Okay. Dropping tanks. Power on. Going down. Safety catches off. Wingman. Cover me. There they are. And now... We're going to try and survive at all costs. There are no bouncers above. Slight slip, side slip, bleed a bit of airspeed. And here we go. Who's who? Holy shit. Hit him. Let's get some altitude. Power on. As long as I keep my energy up, should be good. For another pass at least. There's the bastard. It's the one I hit, I think. Leaking something. And up we go. Stick to me, Red Two. To my speed. Better roll. Oh, you fucker. 
Okay, now I'm out of energy, or at least co-energy with all the bandits, so better start looking around. Head tracking is not ideal. Let's try and not get shot down. That's one, 190 damaged. The bombers are approaching. Rolling back, 12 boost and 2850 RPM. Gonna serve fuel. That's a 190. I think he's just going down. Wasted a lot of altitude for that. Ooh, what's that? Spitfire. Problem back. Conserve fuel. Everybody's above the airfield. I don't like that. Lots of noises. I'm going to talk about this later. everyone There's a single aircraft over there that's a spit being fired at by AAA that's another spit And another one. And another one. Spits everywhere. Turn. Kind of fly straight and level for more than 10 seconds. Otherwise, I'm a dead duck. Oh. Maybe the bombers. Bombers are hitting the airfield. Throttling back even more. Come on, where are you going? Just zigzagging. Oh, that's my wingman. There are the bombers. Where the hell is everyone else? Okay, let's try and get some altitude. That's the most important thing to do. I want to be at around 10,000 feet and crossing the coastline or Abbeville. Checking six. Yeah, the bombers have hit the airfield. Whew. Fuel management is another interesting part of this campaign because. Too bad. Because in my other campaigns, you know, you were flying Mustangs and uh, Thunderbolts with way more fuel than you actually needed. But Spitfires had notoriously short range. And these are the exact missions that they flew. And during testing the campaign, I sometimes landed back at Biggin Hill with three or five gallons of fuel left. Okay, throttling back to max continuous, plus seven boost, 
2650. Uh, still full. The bottom tank is still full. There's a convoy down there. I'm going down to attack. It's a Spitfire. Somebody found a convoy. There's a canal over there. Okay, you know what? Let's go down the low level. And look for some trouble. Maybe we can strafe some enemy trucks. So if you fly low, no, there are the others. If you fly low, you have to fly really low. Wooden bridge. This is it's a town. It's probably not a very smart idea to overfly it, even at low level. It's the estuary already. Stay low. I'll only start climbing once we're way out to sea. There's another town. Awesome. Just great. Hang in there, guys. It's January, only one and a half years, and you're gonna be liberated. Oh shit! Fuck! Machine guns. Oh, my God, I was hit. This is what I mean. You have to be very careful. I was not. Fuck. Recap to grab seat. No sign of the Luftwaffe here. Control is shaking. One more time and then return to base. Over. Oh, I've got hit in both wings. Hello, recap cross seat. Let's hope I'm not trailing any kind of coolant or anything. As long as it's just my controls, I can fight my way back to France. Oh, generator problems too. Okay, let's have a look at this. So, here's the sum estuary. My vector home is 330 magnetic. Let's try and get some altitude first. Power on. 2850 RPM and plus 12 boost, that's max climb uh, settings. You can use it for one hour or half an hour, what's that? Max climbing one hour plus 12, 2850, all good. So you have this mini checklist coming with the campaign. There are the others, I'm not even gonna attempt to rejoin them. That was really stupid, overflying a town at low altitude. Straight and level. If I can make it far enough and my engine quits, I can still contact RC Rescue. If I make it to England, I'm good. I can land. I don't have to land at Biggin Hill. I can land at Hawkins or anywhere. 
Are they going to fix it? Okay, switching back to Zona. Channel A for Evil set. Serve active. Oh. Can't even listen to music, I think. Yeah. Problems with the electric system. Whew. Okay. We have one probable. Nah. Or like one damaged. I mean, he was over his own airfield, so he could probably land. But he was definitely damaged. Climb to 10,000 feet. How are we with fuel? Okay. So that needle should max out until you're at least halfway across the channel. If not, well, you're in trouble. My ground crew, or as they call it in the RF, uh, my ERC, is not going to be happy having to fix all these damages. Oh, okay. 10,000 feet. Let's gain some speed. And then I'll throttle back to cruise settings. Zero boost. 2400 RPM trim. Okay. That was just one mission. I died once and I almost died another time. And I still haven't made it back, and the channel is freezing. It's just one mission. It makes you think. So, as I said, in this campaign you're going to get 14 combat missions and like five or six other ones. Uh, like cutscenes and other kind of missions that are also historically accurate. So, they really happened in real life. I didn't come up with those. But I'm not going to give you spoilers. And uh, everything was based on combat reports original documents so if in some missions you'll be fighting for your life harder than ever your virtual life and in some other missions you'll be bored because you fly uh, relatively like uneventful bomber escort only to meet two enemy aircraft somewhere over France you didn't even you don't even get a shot fire at them because your leader uh, shoots them out of the sky well that's it I didn't come up with any of these okay temperatures look good fuel still good should be all right I can see the English coast Three three zero. That takes me just west of Dungeness, and I'm off course already. Three three zero. But I can see the others, so that's quite enough to follow them. And now again the magic button: time acceleration. I don't even have to fly formation in anyone. So three four. And there you go, you save yourself a lot of time. Loading up. Yellow 2 to yellow leader. I lost all rudder control and she's quite right wing heavy. Oh. Roger, can you make it okay? You're not alone with that.
So somewhere under that cloud layer, that's Dungeon S over there, and that's Beachy Head. They're on course. We don't need the gun sight anymore. Turning it off. check the fuel our bottom tank is still full so we're gonna make it to Biggin Hill for sure okay we are over England and if you don't know where you are you just look outside the cockpit, look at the landmarks, like they did in real life, and zoom out. Look at this three-fingered lake. That's the one. So we're over here. Still on course for Biggin Hill. It's called Dead Reckoning, or using your Mark I eyeballs for navigation. And it's really fun. And as long as I don't have the F10 icons disabled, I'm also lazy. I look at the F10 map and look at the icon and, and it's easy. But this was also part of the life of any World War II pilot. So it just has to be part of the campaign too. Oh, by the way, I wanted to talk about sound effects, but I got distracted somewhere. So. During the dogfight, so before the dogfight, radio transmissions were clear. But during the dogfight, you could hear lots of uh, feedback and noises and buzzing and everything. Stuck mic buttons, microphones picking up uh, machine guns and everything. It's because I read it in a book recently that uh, these radios were not very good. so. In level flight, they were okay, but as soon as they were under high G and you know air combat, a dogfight, and there was vibration from the machine guns and everything, they picked up all kinds of noises and sounds. So I paid special attention to this in this campaign, and also in my upcoming mosquito campaign, you will hear many uh, strange noises. Um, when it comes to a fight. And I think that further increases immersion. It makes you believe that uh, you're actually there. Okay, here we are. We managed to catch up with our flight. There's the CO. How's our fuel? 30 gallons left. Perfect. I've been here at this very location with only 10 or even less. And Biggin Hill should be here somewhere because the AI is hitting the brake. That's just crazy. How can they decelerate so fast? Ah, oh, there it is. The airfield. Okay filter on RPM to 2700 and let's make a high speed pass low altitude over the runway I'm gonna break high left and even if my engine quits I'm gonna have enough energy to come around for a landing and up we go chuck the throttle up to 1,000 feet of altitude canopy open 
the speed drops, the gear down, flaps down, sorry, wingman navigation, return to base, max RPM, trim, I want 110 uh, miles per hour indicated. Are you doing? Damn AI! I just told you to go home. Camp too fast, raising no the nose a little. There's a lot of wind too, and turbulence. I'm fighting the damage controls. Okay, I'm looking at 100 miles per hour here. Cutting the throttle. Ninety over the fence, and got the throttle. Oh, uh oh, something is wrong with the undercarriage. Maybe we've got a flat tire. Ah, uh, yeah, probably. Let's turn off the runway. Flaps up. fuel pump off. I don't really want to taxi around with this. So let's just park here. Okay. Set the brakes. Turn off the radio. Turn off the fuel pump. Oh, that was already off. Uh, what else? Let's clean the spark plugs. Run up the engine. One, two, three. Got the mixture. Open the throttle. As the engine dies. And as soon as the prop stops turning. I turn off the mags. Fuel cock off, master switch off. Whew. We made it. Let's have a look at this. Oh my god, we got really peppered. Oh my god, Grand Crew is not gonna be happy. And I've got a flat. Uh, left tire as well. Whew. We've got to do better than that next time. Okay, let's have a look at the debrief. Okay, we lost three aircraft and oh, I got I got that one kill confirmed. All 12 uh, enemies were shot down. That's one thing that's really hard to reproduce in, in uh, DCS or in a computer game like this. Because in real life, both sides scored, I don't know, one or two kills and then everybody went home. But in DCS, you, you know, they keep fighting uh, as long as one side is alive. Of course, in many of the missions, after a while, I'll tell the AI to stop fighting and to just go home uh, so that fights don't last until one side is completely wiped out because that's unrealistic. But we were in such a numerical advantage here and uh, we had the altitude and everything. So this was a really successful mission. But let's have a look at uh, the original real life squadron records and see what they say. So here it is, and I'll take from the operations record book from 611 Squadron. Begin hail 13th of January 1943, fine and clear. At 1250, the squadron led by squadron leader Armstrong took off on Circus 249er as bouncing squadron 
at 18 Venturas bombing Abbeville Aerodrome. Over the target area, about 12 Fuckwolf 190s were seen and blue section attacked. Flight Lieutenant Colorado Mansfeld and Flying Officer Checkets managed to get near enough to fire and they claimed the destroyed and the damaged, respectively. The squadron landed at base at 14-15 hours without any further incident. During the remainder of the day, almost 20 hours uh, practice flying was completed by the squadron. I think there's a typo, but uh, there was a typo in the original book as well. As you see, that's not a whole lot of information, but that's why I had to check and dig up some combat reports. I read the combat reports of uh, Flight Lieutenant Colorado and Flying Officer Checkets, uh, which gave me a lot of new information on top of this. And also, um, combat reports and squadron records um, of 340 Squadron. Because based on this, you would think only one flight, so only blue flight went down to attack and that was it. But according to uh, the book of the Free French Squadron, there was a huge dogfight going on. Like all the, you know, the turbine aircraft, they, they all went down and attacked and there was a big dogfight. Just like it happened here in game. So this, this was one of the difficulties in creating this campaign. It was good because I didn't have to be creative about the events and how to entertain the player. But um, to get all the information that I needed about these historical events, it took a lot of research. But I'm really happy with the result and I really hope that you will be as well. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you are looking forward to flying the campaign. By the way, if you complete the campaign without ever dying, I will buy you a virtual beer or even a real one if we ever meet in real life. Just let me know. Um, I'm planning to release more videos about the Spitfire. Uh, first of all, a, uh, a complete tutorial about everything you need to know about flying the Spit. And another one about uh, my new control column from Authenticate. The assembly and how to use it and, you know, a little review. It's really awesome. So stay tuned. All right. See ya.